Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to handle NV images of hyperspectral data in Python. I have already talked about how to handle uh, NV images of hyperspectral data in MATLAB, but in this video, I would like to talk about that topic, but the focus would be Python. Let's get started and see how we could do that. As I said in this video, I want to talk about how to handle NV images of hyperspectral data in Python. Hyperspectral images contain the spectrum for each pixel in the image of a scene. They have been used for many purposes such as finding objects, identifying materials, and detecting processes. These sorts of data are a type of image with both spectral and spatial information. So the hyperspectral image is in a sense a cube that contains the spectral reflectance data of each point in the image. In this video, I want to show you guys how to handle the hyperspectral data that are in the format of ENVY. ENVY is the industry standard for image processing and analysis. It is used by professionals across industries to extract timely, reliable, and accurate information from imagery and data because it is scientifically proven and also easy to use. The NV image format is a flat binary raster file with an accompanying header file. The NV header file contains metadata for NV format images. The header file uses the same name as the image file with the file extension HDR. I will show you guys how to read this type of hyperspectral images into Python and visualize them using different approaches. Before doing that, make sure you have installed the necessary libraries Rasterio and Spectral. You can install them using pip as shown here. Now let's go to Python and see how we could handle NV images of hyperspectral data in Python. Okay, here's the coding for this problem. As you can see, I'm importing Rasterio, Matplot, NumPy, and Spectral. These are the libraries you need to run this program. And as you can see, I'm specifying two paths. The first one is the path to the hyperspectral data. And then the second one is the path to the header file of that hyperspectral data. Rasterio needs the path to the hyperspectral data, this one. But spectral library needs the path to the header file, this one. So as you can see here, Rasterio first reads the hyperspectral data and it's going to be saving it in this hyperspectral data. Then I'm going to be showing the shape of the hyperspectral data and then the number of bands. And then here I'm going to be using the spectral library. Using the spectral library enables me to know what wavelength I am working with. So here I know the number of bands, but I wouldn't know which wavelength they belong to. But using spectral library, I could specify the wavelengths. So that's why I'm using also a spectral library. So here I would have the wavelength, and then using the spectral library, I'm going to be again specifying the shape of the hyperspectral data, and the number of bands, but a different method as opposed to the first one, and then the wavelengths. And then here I'm going to be showing you guys some random wavelengths. This is the whole reason that I'm using spectral libraries, so that I would be able to show the wavelengths that I want to. Like here I want to show the wavelengths 462 nanometer. That's how I do it. I first specify the index using the wavelengths that I know what it is using the spectral library, and then I would just show the same index in the hyperspectral data. And that's how I could show that band. Same thing if I want to show the wavelengths 566 nanometer, the same thing here. And now let's say I want to combine the short, middle, and long wavelengths to build some sort of a fake RGB color, SEDU RGB if you will. I need a short wavelength, the middle wavelengths, and long wavelengths. In other words, a blue wavelength, a green wavelength, and a red wavelength. And then I combine them into an image, and that's how I show a SEDU RGB image. So that's about it. I need the spectral library just to specify which wavelength I'm working with. But I also need the rest stereo because it's very easy to use it and read the hyperspectral data. Let's run it and see what happens. So you could see these are the wavelengths that I'm using from 400 to 780 nanometer. And this is the combination of short, medial, and long wavelengths. And this is the band 462. And this is the band 566. 
And as I said, this is the SEDU RGB image that I made using the short, middle, and long wavelengths. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.